estimations or guesstimations, and the problem is it may not be correct. And if it is not correct, your, your, your blood pressure may spike or you may not take enough sodium and that may cause problems in your bones. Now, sodium is not just important for your overall fluid status, but also it's important for your bones as well. So if you are having chronic sodium loss, that can lead to bone loss, and in diabetics, actually that's a problem because patients with diabetes are more likely to have fractures, so their bones are more fragile. Now, if you lose sodium, then you're actually losing bone as well. So as a result, in the long term, if you stay with keto, yes, your blood sugar may be great, but you're gonna be losing bone down, down the road. So you have to be really careful what you're gaining and what you're losing. So blood sugar control is not everything. You need to control your blood sugars in the right way. I'm not saying go take medications. You don't have to take medications, but you have to know exactly what kind of diet, how much exercise, and we have a lot of videos about these. So one diet will not fit all. Keto diet will work for the healthy diabetics, young diabetics, new diabetics. That's it. Anybody who has problems, who have other complications, kidney problems, dehydration problems, medications that can cause low blood sugars, uh, history of kidney stones, all those people should be extremely careful about keto diet. Now, what happens also when your electrolyte balance is off? You will, you will become more irritable, you're going to have balance problems, and you're going to have dehydration problems. Now, you also will be constipated, right? So constipation happens because of dehydration. Again, your bowels needs to absorb some water from your body in order to keep your stool soft and in order to keep you regular. So what happens when you're, when you're dehydrated, you become constipated. And believe me, that's not fun. If you're not going to the restroom for a week, you're going to have major discomfort in, intra-abdominally. So you have to really make sure that you're actually having some non-starchy vegetables and fibers in your diet uh, still so that you can actually keep going. If you are not moving your bowels uh, and if you're having a lot of processed meats, that is the remedy for colon cancer. Yes, you may have wonderful blood sugars, but you may die from colon cancer because you stayed on the keto diet for so long. So again, this is a balance. You have to know if, you have, if you're prone to colon cancer, you have to know your family history, you have to uh, get your screenings done and so forth. Again, that's another reason to make sure that if you're on a keto diet for long term, you have to make sure that your doctor knows about it and you're on top of it. So to avoid problems with electrolyte disturbances, I would still suggest eating healthy vegetables that are high in potassium. That could be broccoli, this could be avocado, uh, flaxseed, chia seed, spinach, uh, could be great sources of potassium and fiber. Uh, so you need to make sure that you are choosing non-starchy vegetables uh, that can be good for your keto diet to avoid problems with lack of fiber and lack of potassium. I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I am the founder of SugarMDs.com. We primarily focus on diabetes and diet. Make sure you go to our website at SugarMDs.com and click on Diabetes Education for a lot of educational articles. Now, of course, YouTube video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, give a thumbs up, and make sure you turn the alerts on so you can be notified for the new videos. Also, uh, on the description below, make sure you guys check our Facebook as well and create our group in there so that you can uh, communicate with the fellow diabetics and, and be part of the community.